Hi clan, it's Ross Stisi, the bearded broker from the Stisi Group. I'm on here with Hamish Shepherd today of Cruncher's Accountants. Hamish is a good friend of mine and he is a very, very well trusted accountant in, in the circle of people that I know. And I've got him on here today to ask him some questions around the current situation. I've got some questions on Facebook to ask and just to see if we can uh, shed some light on some of the most popular things that I've seen come up. Hamish, how's it going? Um, very well. It's a bit of a strange time, I suppose, for everybody at the moment um, with regards to, you know, everything from a business point of view that's kind of going on. And as I say, the kind of information that's coming out from the government um, with regards to the kind of the packages for help for businesses as well. It's kind of changing all the time. So it's a really busy time for a lot of businesses. And I think as well that you know, at the moment we're kind of getting battered with, you know, COVID-19, you know, kind of on the news and everything like that. And I think that a lot of businesses as well are kind of, you know, looking at the kind of the um, negatives of what's happening at the moment uh, and looking down the way rather than looking up the way and kind of saying, well, how can I use this time to actually improve my business and how do I use this time to, you know, look at the opportunities that are out there as well because there's some businesses that are doing really, really well at the moment as well. Yeah, it's an interesting point. Uh, I'm sure, like in any sort of downturn or any problem or any issue that goes on in the world, uh, there's someone, uh, you know, doing well from it and flourishing from it. Uh, so what, what I'll do, Hamish, if you don't mind, I've got some questions on Facebook yep. and I've got a few questions of my own. Uh, so in the past, I have been employed. I have also been self-employed and I am also a limited company director. Uh, along with my other half wife and business partner Emma so we've got some interesting points or questions uh, that have maybe been covered already in the press or wherever else you go finding your information but let's see if we can make shed some sort of light on it so yeah, let's start for the first question this was from uh, Dave Cameron who we both know actually yeah uh, so Dave Cameron's first question was how can we get deferments or reductions on things like council tax while we wait till June for HMRC to stump up? Question mark. Yeah, I suppose, um, and I'm assuming that David's talking about um, domestic, um, you know, council tax rather than kind of, you know, looking at I would assume so. Rates, yeah, rates I would assume so. Like um, at the moment, there is nothing, you know, official out there, you know, with regards to. Um, obviously getting kind of deferments on council tax and things. The, the one, well, two things actually I'll kind of say on that is, one, obviously there's a package of measures out there, you know, to try and help self-employed people. Um, however, there are also personal steps you can take as well. And, you know, we've kind of discussed in the past about, you know, taking mortgage holidays and things like that. Um, so if you take a mortgage holiday, that obviously then will reduce your kind of outgoings. With regards to rates itself, if you're having difficulties, I would definitely, you know, phone your council and, you know, see exactly what help there is. And I think it will be on a council by council you know, basis and they'll potentially look at it. Whether that will be successful or not, I don't know, but because um, there's nothing official with that, about that at the moment. But yeah. as I say, you know, look at your loans, um, defer any loans that you've got, look for loan holidays, um, your mortgage, obviously taking like the three months off for that. Yeah. And, you know, looking at your other kind of expenditure as well and just kind of cutting down on that kind of um, personal expenditure. You know, I you guess one point on that was, so personally, I've taken a, a mortgage holiday uh, because you just, you just don't know what's going to happen over the next few months. So if, in my opinion, it's better to stockpile some cash now. And if I don't need it, then, then happy days. You can either pay it back into the mortgage if you choose to do so. The only uh, picking up on your point there from the loan, so I have a uh, have a personal loan as well uh, for a car, and I did call. So it was Hitachi. I phoned them and they said they didn't know yet if it was going to affect my credit history. So I, I chose not to take that deferment at the moment, just in case it does. Because when we come out of the back end of this, which we will, yeah. you know, I didn't want to be uh, you know impaired credit have an impaired credit history. Whereas on the mortgage front. That, that you know it's in black and white up front that uh, this definitely won't affect your credit history what's what's your thoughts on that um i think definitely you know so the credit history thing i've kind of heard before now i know that you can also put a note on your credit history as well you know to kind of say what the circumstances are now um yeah i think you know definitely any loan that you take you know there's a risk that you know it will affect your credit history kind of going forward if you're taking that deferment 
However, again, you know, the people that are providing that loan should be able to kind of advise you on that, I would say. Yeah, yeah, I, th I would agree. I think it's too early to tell. You know, when I spoke to Hitachi a week ago, yeah. th that was their statement. It was too early to tell. They were still taking advice and... I think they use Equifax. The the chap mentioned Equifax, so they're still taking advice from Equifax as to how that's going to affect things. So, yeah, I think only time will tell. I I think it is important to make sure that we are taking the right advice, but it is still too early to tell, in my opinion, of of where the outcome is going to be for certain things. So it's and just think, being mindful yeah. of that as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the case for across everything that we're getting told at the moment. You know, um, there's things that um, the government are obviously coming out with these schemes to try and help people. And yeah. then it's up to everybody else then to kind of backfill and you know try and make them work initially. Yeah. But also, it's never going to answer 100% of your questions because there's so many variables out there. You know, when yeah. you're looking at these things. So, again, when you're saying about Hitachi, you know, if you speak to Hitachi, their kind of viewpoint might be completely different than you know some of the other funders as well. I I, I agree, and I think ultimately everyone at the moment is dealing with the big, big, big stuff. And it will filter down eventually over days, weeks and, and months as to the information that we end up getting, which today could be different to tomorrow. So we'll yeah, just have to be mindful of that. Uh, I did take comfort from the lenders. It does state in black and white. It is plastered on their website that, that you know, mortgage lenders, that is, that it will not affect your credit history. And that is undoubtedly, undoubtedly. Is that the word? You know yeah. the word. <laughs> uh, that has got to be the biggest the biggest payment for, for most people, I would say. So I'll move on to question two. Yeah, sure. Uh, so this is from Johnny Marr, also on Facebook. So any delays or additional grace period for corporation tax payments due? So corporation tax, no, is a short answer. Um, however, there is a bit of help out there. So if we take the major taxes, if you like, and, and grace periods at the moment, so VAT, um, Basically, the VAT that gets paid in the next quarter between, I think it's 23rd of March and 30th of June, that's going to get deferred. That's automatically deferred as well. You don't need to do anything for that. Okay, okay However, that's good. what you do need to know is, or do, is cancel any direct debits you've got for it, because if you've got a direct debit there, then it'll automatically take that money out. And HMRC are actually telling us that that's the case as well. Okay. Um, income tax, if you're paying on account, and if you're self-employed or whether you're a director, then if you're paying on account, the second payment on account is due to the 31st of July. Again, that is delayed until 31st of January. Um, so again, with all these things, you know, um, well, with DET, for example, you do need to still obviously lodge your VAT return and things like that. It's just the payment that's deferred. Um, with the income tax, again, that's automatic. So again, that will just automatically get pushed back until the 31st of January. If we look at pay as you earn, and if we look at corporation tax, now there isn't deferment payments uh, periods for those. However, there is an HMRC phone number that you can phone up for, and basically it's a time to pay uh, option that they've got. Now, okay. What they're looking, what they're doing there is, and if some people have phoned up HMRC for the old kind of deadline, uh, you know, to get like pay, uh, a payment plan put in place, it's going to be similar to that. They're looking at it sympathetically. That's what we're being told, and also. It's done on a case by case basis. So, you know, it isn't just a blanket, you are going to get this. Um, it'll be done on a case by case basis. And I'm guessing it'll be open to a bit of, kind of negotiation between um, the person who is looking for the time to pay option and um, HMRC. And really, time to pay will just mean that if you are due corporation tax on, I don't know, the 31st of March, for example, you can phone them up and put a payment plan in place, you know, potentially to pay it off over the next six months or whatever. Okay. So, because is there not the worry there that all you're doing is delaying the inevitable? You, so you're saying, for example, your, your own personal tax, your income tax that you're going to pay, you're delaying until, you know, when the next bout of income tax is due anyway. So is there not that sort of general concern that you're just taking a chunk of money that you're due, adding yeah. it onto what is another chunk of money that you're due, or they're going to allow you, do you reckon, to spread that over... A period or they're just going to say well we want it all now because we've got a claw back money from somewhere sort of thing. yeah i think that um i honestly think that they'll probably just you know this is it basically and i think you know i think they will take that full payment you know come 31st right. of january for income tax for example and um, you're completely right what you're saying it's kicking the can down the road basically you know so it's kind of yeah from a personal point of view if you're not being you know, you still owe that money, you know, to HMRC if you like, and you still need to pay that at some point to HMRC. 
However, all these measures at the moment, what they're trying to do is get people over the next few months. Yeah. Where potentially, you know, everyone's got cash flow issues, you know, if they've been um, put on furlough or whatever, then, you know, that's really what they're trying to do is make sure that you've got enough cash over the next three months. And then, you know, hopefully by January, we're going to be back on, you know, kind of open for business again and everything, you know, yeah. and people are starting to um, able to plan for it, if you like. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. Right, we'll move on. I was going to say, Ross, sorry, one last thing on that. Um, Go on. It's not a tax issue, but um, accounts issue. So there'll be obviously, um, there'll be some companies out there that'll be struggling to pull their accounts together. You know, yeah. if they've got a year end date or a deadline basically for their company accounts, then they might be struggling to get that in in time. Companies House at the moment actually are um, giving people a three month extension. Yeah. Uh, on filing your accounts. Um, okay. Now, basically what that means is that um, you've actually got to go online and there's a little uh, process you've got to go through to actually get that extension. However, you know, if as a business you're struggling to get those accounts done or if your accountants, you know, haven't got the resources to pull your accounts together because of the current situation, then people can push that back um, as well. Okay. Actual lodging the company's accounts. Um, so it's just something else just for, you know. And a little bit of grace. Yeah, one of the companies to be aware of. Good point. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we've got. Uh, so this is this is the one that I like because it's quite relevant to me as well. So we've got Gavin uh, Moat who is asking, uh, worth asking him to explain the concept of furlough employees. I think this is probably <laughs> the one that's on everybody's mind, and what the position is for an employee that can't work from home but feels uncomfortable working, even though they are not self-isolating, i.e. no symptoms themselves or their household. Yeah. Okay. So that's a, a, tr a tricky one. And, and is that one for you to, to be answering? Uh, is that an opinion you've got or is that well, a I think, um, your position? Well, I think it's partly it's an HR question, but um, my kind of understanding on that kind of thing where um, if you can't work from home, you know, as an employee, but you're not sick or anything like that, then, it, you know, basically um, employment law still stands at the moment, you know, so yeah. your employer has a duty of care to make sure that your health and safety, you know, is kind of paramount, you know, and everything's getting done to actually, you know, make sure that you're safe at the workplace. Um, it's the employer's decision whether to furlough someone. Um, so it's not okay. up to the employee, basically. And again, depending on circumstances, there's obviously... Um, essential jobs out there um, that we've heard about, you know, whether it's um, frontline staff, postmen, you know, bin men, you know, whatever, uh, people who work in supermarkets, they're all essential jobs. So again, it's employers, um, you know, if it's an essential job, then it's the employer's decision whether they furlough someone or whether there's actually work there. Furlough basically is the same as um, making someone redundant, basically, is what it's doing. Um, and it's basically because there's no work there, then instead of making someone redundant, you can actually furlough them. And the employer doesn't actually have to pay anything uh, towards that at the moment. However, because the government uh, has got the 80% scheme, then basically 80% of your salary will be able to get paid to you um, on a monthly basis, as normal or a weekly basis, whatever your kind of, uh, payments kind of um, schedules like. And the government, if the company at some point will be able to reclaim that basically from yeah. the government. Um, and again, that, that scheme's not open, it, it's open to be, uh, not. it's not open to be administered at the moment, is it? It's 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 open to you to use it as such as an employer to an employee, but we can, as an employer at the moment, go online and make that application to to claim on the government funds. Is that, is that still the case? That's exactly the case. Um, now, I suppose it's probably worthwhile just saying what the process is for furlough and stuff, you know. So if you've got no work, <clears throat> then the first thing, well, it comes into the contract of employment as well. So if there's a clause in the contract of employment about furloughing, then you just follow, you know, that kind of process. If there isn't um, a clause in the contract of employment, then basically a letter needs to get sent to the employee saying that their job is going to be furloughed. And then the employee should be acknowledging that as well. Now, if it's not in the con, you know, as I say, HR kind of uh, legislation still kind of, you know, um, is enforced here. So if anybody's got questions on that, then an HR person is probably the person to speak to. Yeah. From an accountancy side and a payroll side, then basically what's happening is 
we're working out their 80% um, salary and whatever that comes to. And um, you can get paid up to two and a half thousand, basically. That's what you can reclaim from HMRC, uh, from the okay. government at the moment. And when we're processing the payroll, what we're normally doing is we'll set up a kind of additions column and we'll put furlough into that, that pay furlough, in, 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 any pay that's due for furlough, sorry, yep. into that column so it's kind of separately identifiable. Now, there's been a bit of debate over the last few weeks about directors um, and yep. whether you can furlough. If you're the that's what I was going to come on to, yeah. That's, right, that's, okay. yeah, yeah I'll, maybe leave that, I'll maybe leave that then until later. No, um, so. no, no it's, it's, it's pretty much what you know, I was going to come on to the next. So if you want to, if you could, that would be great. Define, so you've got, like I said before, so, so I've been employed for, for, for many, many years in, yeah. in the past. So I've been on both sides of this coin where one, I've been employed, or all three sides of the non-three-sided coin, I, I, I've been employed, I have been self-employed, yeah. you know, sole trader, as well as being a director of a limited company. So what is what is the current situation? So from my, again, my understanding is, so like you said, an employee, as an employer, I can furlough an employee and we can pay them 80%. That's absolutely fine. For a sole trader, so can, can we cover that first, a sole trader? What's, what's, yeah, what's sure. Long um, short of it? I suppose if I kind of finish off on the fair one for employees, I suppose, uh, in this short way, yep. because um, basically, you know, if an employee is fair load, then they get 80%. Um, it's up to the employer then whether they pay addition, additional money to that to take it up to the kind of the normal 100% salary. However, okay. there's no legal obligation at the moment, you know, for the employer to do that. Um, from a director's point of view, as I say, a director is an employee of the company as well. Um, now, initially, the kind of the thinking was that you couldn't uh, furlough a director. However, it's now come to light um, over the last few days that you can actually furlough yourself as a director as well if you're the only director in the company. If you've got two directors, no problem. You can, you know, uh, furlough one of the directors. Um, however, it's a, if it's a single director company, you can also furlough yourself. Basically, okay. What that means is again that there's no work to be done in the business. However, you can do your statutory, easy for me to say, uh, yeah. duties. So basically things like filing your accounts, filing your back returns, okay. paying VAT, all these kind of things. However, things like marketing or, um, or income generating kind of things okay. that normally you would do in a business as a director. So there's a point. To do. Can I jump in on that, that yeah, point sure. there? So I pay a separate person, a separate company, if you like, to carry out our marketing. So uh, we, we're a mortgage advisory broker firm and we uh, help people get mortgages and all the rest of it and that's fine. So the day-to-day -day on me would be a, a mortgage appointment and applications and things like that. But still in the background, we've got someone advertising our business on social media and, you know, can that person not carry on doing the marketing side whilst I'm furloughed? Um, I would have thought so, as long as you're not involved in it. Um, and I suppose, yeah, you know, I don't, to be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure whether that's the case because then, you know, you've got to pay that person, for example, you know, so yep. is that statutory, you know, part of your statutory duties or is the business still then trading? I'd yeah. kind of say it's a bit of a kind of grey area grey and area. it'll yeah. probably, you know, details will probably kind of come out in the next few kind of weeks. Okay. Um, the other thing, um, just to remember, you know, if you furlough someone as well, like an employee, they're not allowed to work in the business either. Um, yeah. So it's basically you're furloughing them because there's no work for them to do. Yeah. Um, so again, you can't just furlough them and then, you know, expect them to kind of, you know, carry, on, yeah. carry, carry on this yeah. kind of normal kind of thing. That'd be a little bit of scheme abuse, I guess. <laughs> well, completely, that's the thing. <laughs> um, the other thing as well to remember is that to furlough someone, they've got to be on the payroll at the end of February as well. So okay. um, it's kind of causing a few kind of issues with regards to some of the people that we're kind of dealing with, because obviously, you know, if an employee has started um, midway through the month of March, then at the moment, there's no help for them. Um, so yeah. if they get furloughed, there's no way to reclaim that 80%. Now, okay. again, I think it's maybe one of these kind of things that will become clearer in the future, because obviously, you know, it's unfair if these guys aren't getting paid, you know. Um, however, at the moment, that's the rules. Um, so you've got to be on payroll at the end of February. Okay, and what about the sole traders then? Because, you know, what 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 what's their position? So sole traders, um, basically, um, 
them and the business are one and the same entity basically so what each uh, what the government have come out to say with them is that they're getting a similar kind of option a similar kind of deal as employees now what happens is um, they've got to have lodged a self-assessment self tax return in 2018-2019 there's yep. a few weeks if you haven't lodged that self-assessment tax return there's a few weeks to actually go ahead and you know, lodge it now, even though that you know it should be lodged by January. Yeah, in January, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you've got a bit of kind of grace there if you haven't uh, lodged it. That self-assessment tax return will have, um, you know, like in your case, for example, let's say if you're employed and I'm doing your self-employed work, kind of partway through the year or whatever, you know, your self-assessment on your SA three hundred two will have things like employed income, self-employed income. It might even have dividends and things like that on it as well, but. This part's only just taking the self-employed income yep. uh, portion of it. If you've done a self-assessment uh, tax return 1819, if you're still trading in 1920 and you've got the intention of still trading as a self-employed person in uh, 2021, then basically you qualify for the scheme. And at the moment, the, what you'll get back is it's an average of your last three years self-employed income. Um, okay. So you take your average of your last three years, find out what the monthly average is for that, and then you'll get 80% of, of that in due course. Now, at the moment, it's slightly different from um, employers, how they're kind of reclaiming it. Um, at the moment, HMRC are saying that they'll get in touch with the people that can actually claim it. Claim it. Um, so they'll get in touch with you directly. And at that point, we're assuming that, they'll, again, there'll be some sort of, kind of online portal that you can basically put your claim yeah. in. And, and then HMRC will tell you how much you're actually due to get back. Okay. You know, so that's kind of um, the process. However, again, it's not set up yet. So okay. You know, it's so I'm a, a one man band. I'm a, a bricklayer and I set up a business or I was subbing on a site as a self-employed guy for the last eight months or, you know, a self-employed hairdresser who, who, who's renting a chair for eight months or, or whatever it is. What, What's their position? Are they just kind of tough at or? The, well, at the moment, they're kind of falling through the cracks. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, it's okay. It's a, it's a bit like that kind of, you know, if a staff member, you know, didn't start until the yeah. 1st of March, then yeah. technically they're outside that kind of, um, that reclaim kind of for fair one. Um, similarly, if um, if you're a sole trader, self-employed person, and you've only just started in the coming year, you're not going to have any self-employed income going back the way. You're not going to have probably done a self-assessment if you're in full-time employment before that. Yeah. Um, so you're not going to have a self-assessment for like 2018, 2019. So again, they're kind of falling through the cracks at the moment. Now, it doesn't mean to say that at some point, you know, there'll be clarification or there'll be a tweak in the rules to actually, you yeah. know, allow these people to get something. But yeah. unfortunately, there's nothing at the moment for, for these people. It's, it's trying to take an umbrella at the moment and, and, and cover everybody with it, is it isn't it? But it's just yeah, really not, not possible. And, yeah. and again, they're dealing with the big, big, big stuff. And then as time goes on, they'll, 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 they'll you know, try and fill those cracks, hopefully, mm -hmm. as time goes on. I, I think so. And, you know, at the moment, you know, there's also universal credit out there and things like that for these okay. things. But, but, you know, it's far from, you know, it's far from ideal. Yeah. And if you have premises, uh, there is the government grant as well, 10,000 if you're, what is it, not or not, not paying any rates at the moment. And if, if you're bigger than that, it's up to 25,000. Is that something like that? Is it similar to that? Um, slightly different, I think. Um, now, the exact amounts um, for rateable values, you know, I can't tell you offhand. It's like, I think it's 18,000, 51,000. Or something okay, like that. Yeah. So if your property is a rateable value of that, then you know there's hundred percent kind of um, relief out there for your rates uh, for that period. Now, with regards to the twenty-five and the ten, um, the twenty-five thousand. Let me just double check for you. If I take the ten thousand for a start, um, the ten thousand is for the smaller businesses. You know, so if you are paying rates at the moment, or if you're yeah. in a rateable system, however, getting like rates relief. Yeah. then you can still qualify for it. And a lot of people okay. are kind of looking at it kind of going, I don't pay rates, and automatically thinking then that they don't actually yeah. um, qualify, which is actually um, not quite true. Yeah. Now, let me just get to the actual amounts for you here. Um, so retail and hospitality and leisure business, um, rate above value between 18,000 and 51,000. 
um, you'll be able to apply for a one-off grant of 25000 So that's in terms okay. of the um, retail and hospitality kind of business. Yeah. Um, for everyone else, there's a grant of 10000 which will be available to small businesses who get either rural relief or yeah. small business bonus scheme relief, which is the one in Scotland. So if you didn't think you were eligible for that scheme, then it's worth checking. It's worth applying to your local authority just to see if you if you qualify for it or not. Um, I don't... Well, definitely. I think it's really, if you're um, renting property, for example, then it's worthwhile speaking to your landlord to see whether, yeah. you know, you qualify, whether you've got a rateable um, number, basically, a rates yeah. number. Um, I think at the moment you'll be struggling to get through to local authorities, you know, yeah, to actually course. kind of, you know, of uh, confirm it. Yeah. However, you know, and I know there's a lot of people, you know, for example, who are in service offices and, you know, if they're in service offices, then I've had a couple of times when they've spoken to like the landlord and yes they are you know they might only be paying like the rateable value of the room that they're renting might only yeah, be like a thousand that's, pounds that's the situation yeah. that we're in yeah. yeah exactly and initially you know it's worthwhile you know speaking to the landlord and just saying look um you know am i paying rates or am i on the kind of um have i got a rates number or whatever yeah um, yeah which, I, which we did yeah because we get a letter every year and then we've got to you know apply is it part of the small business bonus scheme type of idea because yes. we do not pay any rates, so therefore we've applied for that grant and we'll just see if we get it. Yeah. So that, that's fine. Now, just can I just, sorry, I, I meant to ask before. So you've got, so back to the furloughing thing. Yeah. Uh, you've got a director who's taken the minimum salary of 10,000 or 11,000 or whatever the number yeah. is, mm -hmm. 700 a month or whatever it ends up being. Then they've got natural, their dividends on top of whatever that would, would be, what is the current state and situation on on the dividend element or, or at least the profit in the business element? Is there anything yet? There isn't. Um, so from a dividend side, then obviously you can only pay dividends if there's reserves in the company. Yeah. Um, the dividends don't come into the calculation. So at the moment, you know, the kind of traditional way of taking out money out of the business is kind of, as you say, a small salary and then dividends. Yeah. At the moment, you're only going to get 80% of that small salary. Yeah. So, you know, for okay. most people, you know, if you're on 8,600 last year or if it's 9,500 this year, yeah. then you only get 80% of that monthly amount. Um, yeah. Now, from a company point of view, with regards to um, dividends and things, as I say, you know, there's obviously business continuity loans out there at the moment, you know, to kind of yeah. help businesses through kind of short term funding and things like that. Um, but again, yeah, as far as dividends go, really, there's no change there, you know, from the yeah. years before. So I had this conversation with someone the other day and, and, and they were saying, or their opinion was, I mean, ultimately, you know, the, the, the director with the, the shares has had the benefit of drawing cash out of the business, you know, paying, you know, paying less tax because you know it's been tax efficient and things like that and but my kind of rebuttal to that if you like was but the, you know the the company has paid 19 percent corporation tax so there's still there's still tax being generated by the, the business just not as much by the individual and and so my again discussion was well why, why don't why don't the government have a look at the profits in the business then because that's where they're getting their revenue from and ultimately you know national insurance contributions for employees and, and all the rest of it so that the government still had their fair share throughout that time of that business being opened but what's your thoughts on that i think that that would be a good idea you know a lot of um directors at the moment of limited companies and like we're not talking about limited companies here like huge huge limited companies i'm talking yeah. about yeah. you know the kind of um you know the you know the limited company it's a delivery driver or whatever it is you know so yeah. um i think the dip you know the way that they look at it is the dividends and the salary are is the are, is the income basically for the year um, so it does kind of make sense that you know they do look at profits or something like that. However, yeah. how you know it's a complicated area to kind of. It is, yeah. I mean, if you own things, you know? if you own fifty percent of the shares, then you own fifty percent of the profit. Therefore, have a look at the profit and average that over three years, just like you would a self-employed person. Or if you own three percent of the shares, then have a look at three percent of the profit. And you know, it's mm -hmm. the same maths as 
a self-employed yes. person. So again, though, I'll, I suppose the argument there is that you know, a limited company and you are two separate entities. You know, so yeah, you're an employee of that company, um, or you know, uh, point. director of the company, or whatever. But again, you know, that limited company is got limited liability. So if that company got into issues, for example, then you, as a director or a shareholder, yeah. are somewhat protected. So yeah. I suppose you know that's where. I think without changing kind of the law and you know and it might happen going forward that they do say you know what it's kind of a limited company and you have got the same um liability yeah however you know at the moment it's a separate entity so as a result that profit's not yours until such time as you either Absolutely. take a salary or yeah. you take a dividend you know makes sense Okay, thanks very much, Seamus. Have you got any final points or words of wisdom? Or can you tell us when this is going to all go away and everything's <laughs> going to go back to normal? Uh, I wish I could. I suppose uh, <laughs> one thing just to say on the self-employed side that I forgot to mention was that um, it's only for those people that have got self-employed income of under 50,000. Okay. Um, so that's just okay. as a kind of thing there. Um, I suppose like the main thing at the moment, as I say, is there's opportunities out there um, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of businesses as I say you know are kind of getting hit from all sides with regards to you know their say some companies their sales are just kind of you know dropped to zero pretty much overnight and I do yeah. think that it's important for businesses to think look we are going to get through this and um, the steps that the government have put in place at the moment really are one you know like two biggest expenses of a business are rent and staff yeah. And what they're really trying to do is kind of mitigate those kind of two expenses so that businesses yeah. can get through to the other side of it. Yeah, so, um, so and one by, yeah. by the 10 yeah. grand grant or 25 and two by the furloughing employees and paying the 80%. Yes. So yeah, Completely. that makes sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. And yeah. I just kind of think that, you know, there's going to be challenging times ahead. However, it would be good to kind of think that, you know, businesses are going to be in a stronger position at the end okay. of this. Um, yeah. And I think for businesses as well, it's just to have a think about, you know, how the landscape is going to change kind of going forward as well. You yeah. know, so potentially commercial properties, for example, you know, if you're renting out commercial properties and all of a sudden your biggest clients or your biggest tenants have got everybody working from home, then, you know, the question might be, do we need these properties going forward or do we just carry on as we are? So I think there's going to be, you know, changes that's going to happen and with change, is going to happen, you know, there's going to be opportunity there as well. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just for the business owners just to kind of, yes, look at what's happening at the moment, you know, do a cash flow, look at what if scenario planning and all these kind of things. And um, so yeah. you've got an idea of, you know, the longer picture and make sure you've got money, cash to start generating the sales once we get out of the end of once this. Once we get well. out. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, trying to take some of this time that maybe there is a little bit of downtime and, and working on the things that you've been stockpiling away for, for a while, whether that is creating video content or writing blogs or a marketing plan or, or something. And, and I suppose it's, it's trying to keep a positive mindset and doing these things during this time. Would you agree with that, Hamish? Oh, completely. Um, I know my, my background is industry. Um, so I've worked in industry for a long time for bigger companies and things like that. And <clears throat> excuse me, you used to always have that kind of, you know, the water cooler chat in the morning about the football or, you know, what you were watching or what you were doing at the weekend or what the kids were doing, whatever. And then I started subcontracting. Um, so again, you had that kind of interaction with a lot of people. Um, there's a lot of individuals at the moment who will be furloughed or, you know, and they'll be working from home and they might not have any of this interaction, you know. So yeah. I know that, you know, I'm here with Melissa and two kids and, you know, we're a weekend basically, and yeah. you know, everyone's finding it challenging. However, if you're actually just on your own with no interaction with anybody, then yeah, you know, a week's a long time, and never mind, you know, potentially three months or whatever it is, or yeah. six months before we get to normal. So, I suppose yeah. it's from a business point of view as well. Just remember, you know, if you're a business owner and you've got employees, you know, pick up the phone, make sure that they're okay, use things like Zoom, you know, for you know, yeah. um, for business meetings, but also even just, you know, for a chat or whatever, just see. Just for a chat, or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just getting Speak on. another human being. <laughs> yeah, there's got to be awareness there, I suppose, that, yeah. you know, True. what's happening. Um, True. So if anyone wants to get in touch with you, Hamish, how do they get in touch with you? Um, the best way to get in touch with me is probably through the website. Um, mm -hmm. So it's um, accountantsedinburgh.co.uk. Um, so it's accountantsedinburgh.co.uk Exactly, and yep. um, on there um, I'll tell you a little bit about us, a bit kind of thinking behind um, Tonsure's kind of accountants, 
and also there's a contact form there as well. Um, yeah. Otherwise, you know, um, if you Google the business as well, um, you know, it will come up as well. If you yeah. Google like Cruncher's Edinburgh, then you'll yeah. be able to get the de uh, details through that as well. Brilliant. And I mean, you, your kind of market is anyone from the sort of one man band self-employed up to, up to where? Um, well, anything up to probably, well, we can do up to 10 million turnover, but turnover. Um, you okay. know, you're probably kind of looking at, um, you know, anything up to about three and a half, four million basically. Okay. So, and again, Brilliant. that depends on industry as well. And things. Thank you. Well, hopefully that's been helpful for some. Please uh, give us a wee comment or another question. If you've got any questions at all that uh, you'd like to ask Hamish, you can either pop it in the comments section, you can uh, email Hamish directly, or you can contact me on Facebook or Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, other than that, uh, thanks very much for listening. If you've listened this far and are watching this far, and we'll hopefully all see you soon. As the saying goes at the moment, stay safe stay at home. Let's try and get this over as quickly as possible so we can all get back to work. Thanks very much. Definitely. Okay, thanks, Ross. Thanks very much, Hamish. Cheers. Thanks, Ross. Bye.